Here's the subject of today's video, the CBA Level 1 Gate Latch. This is your final project in the CBA's Level 1 curriculum. For the gate latch, I'm going to suggest that the first two pieces, this uh, tapered staple and the hook, are more skills intensive. That's you, the blacksmith at the anvil. And then the cape with that flat top to the staple, and the fact it's tenon to the back plate, is more tools intensive. So that said, let's have a look at some of the tools involved. To create the tenon, I've got a butcher and I've got a swage. To create the staple, I've got a handheld top swage along with a bottom block and swage. Those two holes are to receive the tenons as I put the shape on, that flat spot on the top. If you don't have access to something like this, you can manufacture one. This is inch and a quarter by half inch. The holes are as per drawing, which I believe is inch and an eighth on center. And these uh, clefts here are three eighths of an inch to accommodate the, the bar stock, the three eighth bar stock. And you're going to make a mandrel, which is going to be used for helping you shape up the staple as you go in about your business. As this is a beginning project, I'm going to suspect that you are trying to make your way as a blacksmith and you're trying to source all your tools. So I'm showcasing two tools, the uh, forge and the anvil. The anvil here is a 30 kilo, 66 pound Acacia. That lettering you see on the side says A-C-C-I-A-I-O. Uh, you currently get those for about $130 off eBay, delivered. They are of a steel construction. You can see I did a little spark test on the, the BIC there, um, throwing a carbon spark. So quite a good quality, again, for $130 delivered. You've got to make the stand. And let's have a look at the forge. The forge is a Mr. Volcano. I believe you can only get them from Amazon. It's $88 delivered, and that includes everything from the regulator on the tank to the fire brick in the bottom of the forge. The fire bricks that I'm using for the front and back doors, you have to source from your local hardware store. It does come as a kit, otherwise it wouldn't survive shipping, and so you get uh, rigidizer and this ceramic coating that you've got to apply yourself. Let's have to spark it up and see what it does. Well, that's coming up to heat. I'll cut some bar stock and we'll have a look at some theory. We're going to start with the staple because it's the easiest thing to make. This is one inch ID and it's made out of three eighths of an inch round bar. And these are inch and three quarter long tapers that come to about one sixteenth or so square on the end. They don't come to a dead sharp point. So, let's so if we do what math we can on that, we know that the staple is one inch ID. That's no good to us. We want the neutral axis of the bend. So I'm going to add the ID to the thickness of the stock, in this case three eighths of an inch, for a diameter of one and three eighths of an inch. So when we have a look at that. C equals pi times diameter. C equals, I'm going to go with three for pi times the diameter, which we said was one and three eighths. So one being eight eighths plus three eighths, it's 11 eighths for a total of 33 eighths, which is going to give us four and one eighth, if we simplify that. When we look at the four and one eighth, that is for the whole circumference. We've only got half the circumference, so we need to divide that by two, which is going to give us two and a sixteenth. I'm not going to mess around with that. I'm just going to call it a straight two. And then we have a little bit of a lead here between the point of curvature for the staple and the point of taper. And that's three eighths of an inch per side, so three quarters of an inch total. So I'm going to add three quarters of an inch to my two inch for two and three quarters. That gets us to the top of the tapers. And now we need to do a test piece to find out how much material was needed to make the taper. One of the things I want to note about this staple is it doesn't come to a sharp point. It's going to come to, let's call it a 16th or a fat 16th inch square. If it comes to a sharp point, 
it's just going to bend as it goes through the grain to the wood. So that's going to affect the math if you're doing this by math calculation. So to do the test piece for our uh, taper, what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of 3 8 round. I'm going to come back a known distance and I'm going to make it about 5 inches so I'm well out of the way. And I'm going to put a chalk mark there. And I'm going to center punch that. So now I can do whatever it is I need to do, in this case make a square taper. Once I've got the square taper to the correct length, I can measure my unforged stock and then I'll know how much of the material I needed to make my thing. Let's get that hot and go. And we're right at inch and three quarters there. So if I measure from the top of that, I have got about four inches. So I'm going to say I used one inch of material to make my inch and three quarter long taper. And then we just worked out we need an inch of material to make our one and three quarter long taper. So it's inch plus two and three quarters for three and three quarters plus an inch. But we have one taper already made. So let me back that out. So I've got um, two and three quarters, three and three quarters. If I measure back three and three quarters of an inch, I can use my test piece as my final staple. So I'm just inside of my other center punch mark. and we'll go to work. I would like the two tapers to be um, similarly matched and I'm going to hold on to this taper with some V-bit tongs. That means I'm going to have to hold this at a 45 degree angle as I work to draw the next taper. As this is a skills test, the drawing calls for the um, the tapers to be equal and uh, not one leg longer than the other. Uh, in the real world that would be a foul. I would like one leg slightly longer so I can start that staple in the wood and I've only got one end that's going to be free. But again this is a test so we're going to do it as per the test and we're going to try and keep those two ends equally matched. So if I subtract my one inch and my one inch out from my four and three quarters I should be left with two and three quarters between tapers and that's what I have two and three quarters half of that is going to give me one and three eighths so if I make a line at about one and three eighths and then center punch that that will help me control the bend as I work at the pick I like the tapers to be on the bias to the work, that is I've got a corner of the taper uh, along the center line of the bar here. That enables me to come in and tidy up the taper should it get bent as I'm turning the staple. If this was flat to the work I'd be no problem working here, but trying to correct it on the other face would be difficult. So I like it on the bias. I'm going to take another heat, swap that around. So we're still, there's our center. Just need to control the bend a little more for another heat.
my rule is one inch wide so you can see that is just a reasonable fit inside my ends are not quite matched uh, i might lose a point for that but that's okay i'll take that loss my center punch should be somewhere near the middle there there it is and i haven't overworked that arch and by overworking i mean when i'm working at the bic i have air underneath where i want to work as soon as you have the bic underneath you'll hear the bic and uh, you're forging it not bending it so there's my staple complete